Hey, what is going on Twin Ten No Nation? Hope you're having an awesome day. Now yesterday, last night for me anyway, around midnight, we got a new Ultra Sun and Moon trailer. And I was going to make a trailer breakdown, but I thought no one would really be awake to watch it. So I was going to make a trailer breakdown today. And fortunately enough, we got a second trailer and an English one at this, uh, at this point, because the one last night was uh, a Japanese one. And we got so much more news, so I'm really, really glad I did not make that trailer breakdown last night. But we have so much to talk about in today's video. For Ultra Sun and Moon, uh, so many new details, new Ultra Beasts, it's just some groundbreaking stuff that definitely separates it from Sun and Moon. A lot of people, including myself at first, were thinking, you know, it's not going to be too different to Sun and Moon, but it definitely is going to be. So before we jump into these two trailers, obviously if you have been watching these trailer breakdowns, then you'll know I'm giving away a copy of Pokemon Ultra Sun and Pokemon Ultra Moon. But for those who don't know, basically I'm giving away a copy of Ultra Sun over on Twitter and Ultra Moon over on Instagram. If you want to enter the giveaways, the link is in the description to both of those. Make sure you enter before November the 1st. Uh, the reason it's November the 1st is just so I can actually pre-order the game and get it shipped to the person uh, basically on the day the game comes out. It's much easier that way. But anyway, make sure you're into those if you want to win a copy. But without further ado, guys, let's break down the first trailer. Now, the first trailer we're going to look at is a Japanese one that came out last night. I just want to go over that quickly and then we'll jump over to the more interesting English one. But this one is still very, very interesting. A bit more cryptic, this one. So first of all, we do get to see a few parts of Ultra Sun and Moon that look very similar to actually Sun and Moon uh, kind of cuts. I say cutscenes, but they're not really cutscenes. They're just areas where you talk to certain characters. So we can see us talking to the professor, and then we can also see us talking to his wife later on. I can't remember the exact name for that place, but it's like the, the research lab on Ultra Space and Ultra Beast. And obviously you do go there as part of the story in Sun and Moon. So they're trying to make it look very similar to Sun and Moon, but it's definitely, definitely not similar for sure. So we also get to see the first appearances of the Ultra Beast Circuitry and Guzzlord. Now, I'm not too sure where Circuitry is, but we definitely see that Guzzlord is outside Tapu Bulu's shrine, the Ruins of Abundance, which are located at the north of Haina Desert. I'm not sure what Guzzlord is doing there, but it looks very, very cool. It just drops out the sky. And then after that, we get to see a brand new area, which I'll talk about a little later in the video, uh, because that's kind of more linked to the English trailer for sure. And what seems to be Necrozma on a glowing pedestal with the player approaching it, really not sure what that is at the moment. And from what I've gathered from the translated text from the Japanese trailer, Necrozma is stealing light from the world. Sort of like an eclipse, I know a lot of people wanted this game to be called Pokemon Eclipse, uh, but there's definitely a few links between they actually show uh, an image of an eclipse part way through the trailer. So definitely some things going on between the Necrozma and the Sun and Moon uh, kind of symbolism, but we'll definitely see more about that in the game. Anyway, moving on, we get to see a close-up of the player on the pedestal with the light surrounding him. Now, notice behind the player there is an Ultra Wormhole. Now, the player is actually in a different world, which I will explain in the English trailer, because we get more details then. Um, and it looks like Lily has been left behind in Alola. It kind of looks like she's at the uh, altar of the sun or altar of the moon, depending on which game you're playing. That area where we saw them in the trailer, uh, kind of watching Necrozma and Nebi fight it out. So it looks like the light might be stolen from the Alola region and being powered by Necrozma to give light back to this other world that the player is in, which uh, basically this other world, I'll give you a quick analogy before we jump into the English trailer. Basically this other world is home to Necrozma, I guess, which actually stole the light from this world. And the evil team or the new evil team that we think it's going to be actually called the Ultra Recon Squad, they're trying to get the light back by the sounds of it. So maybe they're using the Necrozma to actually bring light from the Alola region, maybe drain the light from the Pokemon world to give it to theirs. We have no idea at the moment, but that's a, a sound theory at least. Now we also get to see the first appearances of Guzma and Lusamine, uh, and this confirms their return for the games. We hadn't seen them up to this point, but it was pretty expected that they would be back, to be honest. Now next up, we see the player riding Solgaleo and Lunala, and you'll use these Pokemon, and technically they are ride Pokemon in the game, to go to other worlds. And basically these other worlds are like the Ultra Space from the end of Pokemon Sun and Moon, if you guys remember that, where we had to fight Lusamine. It's going to be very similar to that, and we get to visit quite a few, which I'll talk about in a minute or so. Now we can also see the player is wearing a special suit that matches those of the new evil team, uh, the Ultra Recon Squad. And since we have the same uniform as them, maybe we're actually helping them out. Uh, with Necrozma being the main villain and not the Ultra Recon Squad. And the final part of the Japanese trailer sees the player slowly approaching a glowing Necrozma. Very interesting stuff, very cryptic, we have no idea what's going on. But the English trailer does kind of help 
piece the puzzle together, I'd say. Uh, so let's jump into that straight away. So first of all, the English trailer, as I was talking about earlier, dropped a huge piece of news, which is we can travel to brand new worlds in Pokemon Ultra Sun and Moon. And these worlds are the home to the Ultra Beast. Now, like I said in the end of Sun and Moon, we went to an Ultra Space and originally I think most of us thought this is the world of the Ultra Beasts. But actually, it seems to be just home to a specific one, and we only did see one to be fair while we were there, and that was Nihiligo, which is a parasite Pokemon, the one Lusamine was obsessed with. So it looks like we'll be travelling to so many different worlds to battle each different Ultra Beast. Now we actually get to see some of these worlds in, in gameplay, which is crazy. I didn't think they'd actually show that stuff off. So firstly, we get to see Zerkatree's world, uh, which is the electric Ultra Beast. Um, I'm sure you guys know which Zerkatree is. And the world itself actually resembles Zerkatree a lot with the wires and the kind of, I guess the plastic ties around the cables. It's supposed to be some kind of electric uh, cable kind of Pokemon. And we can also see it running below the player, which is really, really cool to see. Now next up, by the looks of it, is a very prehistoric world that is home to Boswall. And we can see a volcano erupt in the background as well as a thick jungle with lots of big trees a player must walk on to get to Boswell. Uh, very interesting stuff. I think that world definitely fits Boswell to a T for sure. And then next up we can see the home of the Ultra Recon Squad. At the moment these guys are super mysterious. Uh, but the world they actually live in is called Ultra Mechalopolis. Something like that. It's a, it's a crazy name. we got Ultra in there for obviously the Ultra Beast but... Interesting that Mega's there. Maybe we'll get some new Mega Revolutions. I think that's just wishful thinking for sure. And just look at this artwork, by the way. This looks incredible. This definitely doesn't really look like Pokemon artwork we see a lot, but looks super realistic and really, really nice. And um, yeah, the trailer describes this place as a world where Necrozma has stolen the light. Now, it's very interesting to see other humans existing in a vastly different world. Did they actually come from the Pokemon world or were they actually born in that world? Is it, you know, inhabited by humans? Definitely interesting, I think we're going to have a lot of discussion about that in the future for sure. And we can also see how the world is very similar in design to Necrozma with the you know the black pillars and the sharp kind of angles, very similar to Necrozma indeed. Now let's talk about the Ultra Recon Squad in more detail. So firstly, its team members are version exclusive, which is kind of similar to Pokemon Ruby, Omega Ruby, Pokemon Sapphire, Alpha Sapphire with uh, Team Magma and Team Aqua. So in this case, there are four members of the Ultra Recon Squad we know about, but only two of them per game. So if you do buy Pokemon Ultra Sun, you'll have Dulce and Zossi. I really have no idea how to pronounce these names, but I think that is right. Uh, but if you buy Pokemon Ultra Moon instead, you'll have Psycho and Soliera. Uh, so kind of interesting to see that they are version exclusive. Wonder if they will differ that much. Now, although in the trailer it does show them battling the trainer, it is hard to see these guys as an evil organization at the moment, as they let us walk around in their world no problem, as well as lending us a suit to travel to other Ultra Spaces, which we saw when we were riding Solgaleo and Lunala. Our suit that we're wearing matches theirs perfectly. Now, there is a chance that we actually didn't get this suit lended to us by them, but I'm going off the basis that that is the most obvious uh, explanation at the moment. However, on the other hand, there are a few signs that make them actually look like an evil organisation. So we can actually see footage of the Ultra Recon Squad at the Aoife Foundation, and they seem to be mimicking the exact same movements uh, as the Aoife Foundation members did at the opening cutscene in Pokemon Sun and Moon. Uh, it makes me think that Lily is running away with Nebby in a bag, but instead of the Aoife Foundation members, it's going to be the Ultra Recon Squad instead. Not sure why they're after Nebby, maybe it's because Solgaleo and Lunala can provide them that light they need. But yeah, very interesting, that seems to be the case. Could be completely wrong, that might just be coincidence, but I'm going to put my money on that as an opening cutscene from what we've seen um, due to the similarities. But let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Do you guys think that Ultra Recon Squad are an evil organisation or the main antagonist in the game? I'm not too sure at the moment, but there are definitely signs to suggest that they could be. So let me know in the comments below. Now continuing on with the Ultra Recon Squad, uh, just looking at them, they look incredibly pale and I'm wondering if they were just actually born like that and that's how they are in that world or is it because Necrozma is stealing the light, that's why they have literally no colour to their faces. They have a bit of colour in their hair but it's still quite faded so I wonder if they would actually look like normal humans if they had their light back. But anyway, let's move on to this brand new Pokemon, this brand new Ultra Beast which Officially, we don't know its real name, but so far we know its code name, UB Adhesive. Now, this Pokemon is a pure poison type, and if we consider Ultra Beast legendaries, then technically it's the first poison type legendary. We can also see it being controlled by one of the Ultra Recon Squad members, meaning they'll have Ultra Beasts on their side when we battle them. So that's definitely the first time an NPC 
has control of an Ultra Beast. So that'd be really interesting to fight a few Ultra Beasts on our way throughout the story. Now following UB Adhesive, we got a few new details on UB Burst and UB Assembly. Now first up, UB Burst is a Fire and Ghost type, which let's be honest, no one saw this coming at all. I definitely did not see that coming for its typing. And it also has a brand new move called Mind Blown, which is one we actually saw before, but it detaches its heads and throws it at others. Now this move seems incredibly powerful, but it also gives a lot of recoil damage in return. It seems to take around a half of its health off. And next up is UB Assembly, which has a more obvious typing, which is just Rock and Steel. We don't really see a brand new move with that. Uh, not saying it doesn't have one, but I, you know, you think if it did have one, they would have shown it off for sure. Now that's it for both trailers, but there is one more thing I do want to talk about that is quite interesting. So in an official piece of art that was released at the same time of the trailers, we can see some of the different worlds we can travel to, as we get to see the artwork of the player riding Solgaleo and Lunala. Now one of these behind Solgaleo is actually an area we saw in one of the first trailers. Uh, it's the area with the tree in the middle with the steep canyon walls. I don't really know how to actually describe this world, uh, but showing the gameplay or the footage on the screen, you'll know which one I'm talking about. Very interesting. And then we also get to see another world. Uh, we actually get to see a picture of it, obviously on the official artwork and a picture in gameplay. I'm not sure whose world this could belong to. I'm not too sure. Let me know in the comments below. Maybe this is actually brand new Ultra Beast world that we still haven't seen or it could belong to an original one from Sun and Moon that we already have seen but yeah very interesting stuff but anyway guys that's it for both trailers that's it for everything basically Ultra Sun and Moon for now uh, we do have Koro Koro coming out hopefully soon I'll be surprised if there is even more information because obviously the games are out next month to kind of want to save uh, most of the story details for then but anyway guys if you're excited for pokemon ultra sun and moon make sure to leave a like on this video really really appreciate it and if you want to stay up to date with more pokemon ultra sun and moon videos then hit the subscribe button down below and make sure you're part of the twin tendo nation anyway guys thank you very much for watching hope you have an awesome day and i will see you on the next video peace